Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at the curvature of a vector function or the curvature of a space curve. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to think of curvature as the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length. So how does the curve change with respect to arc length? And what we're going to do is take this very basic definition of curvature and derive two useful formulas for that. So the first formula is going to be derived using the arc length function. So the so arc length function, if you recall, is s of t equals the integral from a to t magnitude r prime of u du. So the curve c is parameterized by r of t, and the starting point of the curve is r of a. So that's the basic definition of the arc length function. So then by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we could say that ds dt would be equal to the magnitude of r prime of t right here. All right, so then the curvature is absolute value of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length. So recall that the unit tangent vector is just r prime over its magnitude, so that's going to be useful for later on. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that there's some kind of intermediate variable, like uh, t, like uh, right here. t is an intermediate variable between capital T and little s, so the arc length t. So what we're going to do is basically invoke a chain rule and say that there's an intermediate variable between capital T and little s. All right, so then we've got a chain rule going on, and what we can do is we can rewrite this in terms of a fraction. So dt dt is really just capital T prime, and then write this in the denominator as ds dt. So now, oh wait, ds dt is magnitude of r prime, so stick that in the denominator. And now that constant in the denominator, at least constant as far as like the magnitude of a vector goes, it's just a scalar function, that can come out and we can just move the magnitude up to the numerator. And that becomes magnitude of t prime over magnitude of r prime. So that's our first, we'll say, useful formula for curvature. So that would be a good formula for using to calculate the curvature of some space curve. Magnitude of t prime over magnitude of r prime. Now let's look at um, deriving a second formula just in case this formula doesn't work or it doesn't uh, pan out or maybe it's a little too difficult, we'll use a different formula and that's usually a little bit more um, sure. So it's going to work most of the time. So before we can prove or derive another formula, what we have to first do is show that the unit tangent vector is always perpendicular to its derivative. So that's an interesting claim, but it'll be something that's quite useful in our derivation later. So we're going to show that the unit tangent vector is perpendicular to its derivative. All right, so note that the magnitude of the unit tangent vector by the very name, its unit tangent vector, is equal to 1 since it's a unit tangent vector. So we can square it and it's still equal to 1, but we know that the magnitude squared is just the dot product of the vector with itself. So the dot product of the vector with itself is equal to 1. Now differentiate both sides with respect to little t. And we can take the product rule on the left, so derivative of the first would be t prime dotted with t, plus first times derivative of the second, so t dotted with t prime. Derivative on the right-hand side would be, would be derivative of 1, which is 0. So we have t prime dotted with t plus t dotted with t prime equals 0. Well, that's just 2 times t prime dotted with t, which equals 0, which shows that they are indeed perpendicular. So the dot product of t prime with t is 0. All right, so that fact is going to be useful when we derive the next formula. So now let's derive the other formula. Well, first we've got to start off with by saying, okay, what is the unit tangent vector? Well, by definition, the unit tangent vector is the r prime of t vector, this is a tangent vector, divided by its magnitude. Now, what we're going to do is we solve for r prime in that equation. So we get this first equation that we're going to use later. r prime is equal to unit tangent times magnitude of r prime. Just a simple algebra step here to multiply both sides by that denominator. All right, so now we can rewrite that as capital T times ds dt. That's going to show up later. All right, so now take the derivative, the derivative of this r prime equal to t ds dt. So r double prime will be doing the product rule to get that. So derivative of the first is t prime times the second ds dt plus the first, t, times the derivative of the second, so the second derivative of s with respect to t. That's another formula we're going to use in just a second. So these two formulas, we're going to keep those in. All right, so we start off with r prime cross r double prime. Why is that? Well, we have no idea at this point why we're doing this, but this is where we're going to start. We're going to start off with taking r prime crossed with r double prime. 
Now, r prime we know is this term, t times magnitude of r prime, cross product with r double prime, which is this term, so we stick that right here. Now, the cross product distributes over vector addition, so let's write it that way. This term, cross product with this term, well, this constant function, or sorry, this scalar function can come out of the cross product, and this scalar function can come out of the cross product, so we just have t crossed with t prime. Now, distribute this term to the second, and same thing, pull out the magnitude of r prime, pull out the d s, or the second derivative of s with respect to t, and then we just have t crossed with t left on the cross product. Now, t is crossed with t, well, those two vectors are parallel, that's going to give you the zero vector. So this cross product gives us a zero vector, so this term actually is not even useful, it's just zero, it's the zero vector, so we're not really adding anything, so the only thing we get is this term right here. Well, ds dt, we know that that's r prime magnitude, so we could just rewrite this as r prime cross r double prime is equal to r prime magnitude squared, because this is another r prime magnitude, times t cross t prime. And now it's good to know from earlier that t is perpendicular to t prime. So let's take the magnitude of r prime cross r double prime. That's just taking the magnitude of that last formula we had here at the bottom. So this formula right here, take the magnitude of it. So we take the magnitude, well that constant, or sorry, that scalar function r prime squared can come out of the magnitude, no problem. And that leaves us with the magnitude of t cross t prime. Well here's the useful part. Because t is perpendicular to t prime, I can just say that this is the magnitude of t times magnitude of t prime times sine of the angle between them. So that's a theorem for the cross product, is that the magnitude of the cross product is the product of the magnitudes times the sine of the angle between those vectors, and we know now the angle between those vectors is pi over 2. So, magnitude of the tangent vector is 1. Sorry, magnitude of the unit tangent vector is 1. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Aha! We get magnitude of r prime cross r double prime is equal to magnitude of r prime squared times magnitude of t prime. So we solve for magnitude t prime, we get magnitude of r prime cross r double prime over magnitude r prime squared. That's the formula we're going to sub into our curvature formula to get a new formula. So now curvature is equal to, by what we derived earlier, magnitude t prime over magnitude r prime. And then I can substitute this in right here for capital magnitude t prime. And there's another one down here, so that just makes it a cube in the bottom. And this is our second useful formula for curvature. And that's how we derive it. Feel free to pause, go back, and check out any steps or anything that you didn't uh, quite catch on to the first time. I know I went pretty fast, but hopefully uh, it makes sense a little bit, especially after you watch it a couple of times. Thanks for watching.